St. Luke chapter 1 from 7 to 15, St. John chapter 1 from verse 6 to verse 8. If you found it, when you found it, in honor of the word of God, I'd like to invite you to stand with me. St. Luke chapter 1, 7 to 15. St. John chapter 1, 6 to 18. I hope you permitted your Bibles to travel with you today. Amen. And so that we can use them in the house of God. I'd like to read to you from the new King James Version of the Bible. And these verses will indeed form the context of our sermonic discourse this afternoon. If you found it, say praise the Lord. The Bible records these words, but they had no child because Elizabeth, Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his vision, according to the custom of the, of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense, and when he went into the temple of the Lord, the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And I read that part once more. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. John 1, verse 6 to verse 8. St. John 1, verse 6 to verse 8. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. Lord hath already added a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of his holy word. I'd like to speak to you today as I borrow from the Bible. Are you the one? Or should we look for another? Are you the one? Or should we look for another? Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Father in heaven, we invite you to speak now. For indeed, we are prepared to listen, and we are prepared to obey through your grace and the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of God's children say, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As students of Scripture, we would come to find, we would come to find as students of the Bible, we would come to find that there are not many instances in the Bible where the conception or birth of a child had a divine announcement. If you're still with me, say yes. All right, I'll preach to two of you who are with me till the rest of you catch up. Here it is, here it is. There are not many instances or places in the scripture where we find that the conception of a child or the birth of a child would have some kind of divine or celestial announcement. There are not many places where parents are visited by angels and are told that they're going to be having a son or they're going to be having children. There are very few places in scripture where this is found. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to understand, those of us who study commerce, we've come to understand that rarity, rarity in any of its form means value. Oh, help me today. Rarity means value. And this occurrence, as rare as it is, suggests that there is some kind of value in the announcement. The Bible says, the Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, that Zacharias, the high priest, and his wife, Elizabeth, were advanced in age. These two people had no children. But one day, ladies and gentlemen, Zacharias went into the temple to perform his duties and the angel visited him and gave him a grand announcement. And the grand announcement is that at this impossible, biologically, scientifically impossible time of your life, you and your wife are about to have a son. You're going to call his name John. He's going to be a powerful man of God. You shall give him no strong drink. You shall give him no wine. He is going to be a powerful man of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the thing was so incredible and unbelievable that Zacharias did not believe it. The high priest did not believe. And the angel said to the high priest, ministering on behalf of God at the altar did not believe God and God said to him because of your unbelief you are going to be mute until the child is born am I talking to anybody in the church ladies and gentlemen the Bible said that God God visited the parents of this child and told them that they're going to be having a child and that this child is going to be filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb oh let me Lord help me Lord I said he's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit while he's in the process of gestation. In fact, the child was so filled with the Holy Spirit that Mary, the cousin of Elizabeth, came to visit her cousin. And while she came to visit her cousin, historians believe that she was about three months pregnant. Are you still with me? She was pregnant with Jesus. And when she came to visit Elizabeth... The Bible said, ladies and gentlemen, that the baby, John, in the womb of Elizabeth, leaped in the presence of Jesus. Am I talking to anybody in the church today? And not only did he leap, ladies and gentlemen, but in that moment, his very mother became filled with the Holy Spirit. This child is filled with the Spirit from, from, from conception. Is anybody in the church? And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, John, the six months pregnant Elizabeth is in the presence of Jesus and while he's in the womb this child knows that when you're in the presence of Jesus you ought to worship I wish I had a church in the house today I said, this child knows that when you're in God's presence, you are to worship. When he found that he was in the presence of God, the baby leaped and rejoiced. Are you still with me? And worshipped in his mother's womb. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. Filled with the Holy Spirit. I wish, ladies and gentlemen, I wish, ladies and gentlemen, my two-year-old daughter was filled with the Holy Spirit from conception. Am I talking to anybody in the church? Therefore, we'd have a more exciting time with her today. Praise God. Am I talking to anybody in the church? But this child was filled with the Holy Spirit from conception. And not only did he have the Spirit, but he gave the Holy Spirit to his mother. His mother became filled with the Holy Spirit. God visited his parents and told him that this child would have a special mission. Are you still with me today? Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible gives very little detail about John. But the next time we see him, the next time we see him, ladies and gentlemen, John is somewhere in the wilderness. He is eating locust and wild honey. He came to this earth on a mission. Are you still with me? And he went into the wilderness to prepare for his mission. And when he was done preparing for his mission, he emerged from the wilderness. And when he emerged from the wilderness, he came by the banks of the river Jordan. And the fellow began to preach. Can I talk to somebody? I said he began to preach. 
And as he began to preach, the folk began to flock him from all over the place. He didn't send an invitation. He didn't send an invitation. He didn't put up a banner. Can I talk to you? He had no amplifiers. He, he had no videos on Facebook. He, he had no YouTube channel. Can I talk to somebody today? All that he did was stood and preached the unadulterated word of God. And as he preached, ladies and gentlemen, four came from all over the house. And I, sometimes I come to understand that if we simply lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring, then the purity of the gospel of Jesus will draw men and women to him. John began to preach, ladies and gentlemen, and he, he preached, he preached on the repentance. And as the folk came from all over Jerusalem and all over Judea, he came. And as he came, ladies and gentlemen, John looked at the folk that is standing in front of him. And he addressed them as a generation of vipers. Am I talking to anybody in the church? Man, if this preacher should do that today, nobody going to be in church tomorrow, next week. Is anybody in the church with me? But John, ladies and gentlemen, was a fearless preacher. John preached on anything and everything. Though ever sin was found, he preached. Can I talk to you? In fact, it was this kind of boldness and this kind of fearlessness that landed John in prison because John preached against the Tetrarch about his relationship with his brother's wife. Am I talking to anybody? John, ladies and gentlemen, preached the word of God, did all that God told him to do. Can I talk to somebody? And ladies and gentlemen, folk came from all over the place and were baptized. And when people heard John preaching, they asked the question, is this Elijah? Is this one of the prophets? And Elijah responded, no, I'm not Elijah. I'm not one of the prophets. I am simply the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Can I talk to you? Make way the path of him that is to come. John's responsibility was to prepare the hearts of men and women for the accepting, for the preparation to accept the coming of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Can I talk to you? And ladies and gentlemen, I digress to tell you that the church of the living God today still has the same responsibility that John had at that time. John was the forerunner before Christ came. And this church is the forerunner to prepare men and women for the coming of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, John filled with the Holy Ghost. John filled with the Holy Ghost. And like John, ladies and gentlemen, those of us who are in this church, the Bible promised that just before the coming of Jesus Christ, old men like me will see dreams. And young people like you will see visions. Can I talk to somebody today? And God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Can I talk to the church? I said, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And sometimes I understand that God wants to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Allow me to digress. You know, when I was growing up, I, I don't know if it shows me, but when I was growing up, I really liked food. Praise God. Only two people like food. Amen. But I grew up in Jamaica. Forgive me. And in Jamaica, we like food. Is anybody in the church with me? Uh, when I'm talking about food, it's not macaroni and cheese. Praise God. Two, there's someone who's not going to say amen. But I'll take it. Amen, everybody. I'm talking about cornmeal dumplings. Two people can understand. The folk over there looking at me funny. What is that? Is anybody in the church? Uh, some good yellow yam. Can I talk to somebody today? Uh, some good gungu pea soup. All right. Praise God. I don't want to get too hungry for lunch. But, but, but man, we, 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 I love me some food. But my mother had a principle. Can I talk to you? Work with me. Can I talk to you? My mother had a principle. My mother cooks the food. But my mother never shares food until all dishes in the kitchen were clean. Oh, help me today, Lord. Am I talking to anybody in the church? I said she never shares food until all plates were washed. 
all dishes were clean. That was her principle. Can I talk to you today? The kitchen must be clean before she shares the food. And sometimes I wonder, could it be that the Spirit of God is waiting to be poured out upon all flesh? But God is saying, I can't pour out my Spirit yet because there are some vessels that need to be cleaned up. Can I talk to somebody today? Because I can't pour out my Spirit in dirty vessels. There are kitchens that need to be cleaned. The Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, that this church of the living God will be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Can I talk to you? And God's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. That when you open up your mouth and speak the thus said the Lord God, people know that you're a child of the living God. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Can I talk to you today? I said, there's a man sent from God whose name was John and the greatest honor of John's life. That one day John is preaching and baptizing in the Jordan River. John began to announce that there's one coming after me. The latch of whose shoes I'm not even worthy to untie. You see, I baptize you with water. But when he comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And he will baptize you with fire. And as he's preaching, ladies and gentlemen, he lifted up his eyes and saw his second cousin, Jesus, walking towards him. And as he saw Jesus coming towards him to be baptized, John lifted up his voice and cried, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. There was a man sent from God. Are you still with me today? And John had the privilege of baptizing. Baptizing Jesus. But after John baptized Jesus, we never saw John again. Oh, help me today. After the baptism of Jesus, there is a void, there's a vacuum, there's a gap between the last time we saw John and the next. Because there have been years of Jesus' ministry. But the next time we see John, John is in prison. I wish I had a church in the house. I said, John is in prison, ladies and gentlemen. And not only is John in prison, but according to the syntax of the text, it appears that Jesus never visited John in prison. In fact, it got so bad, ladies and gentlemen, that John sent one of his disciples to go to Jesus and ask him the question, are you the one? Or should we be looking for another? Am I talking to somebody today? The man who was filled with the Holy Ghost. The man who filled his mother with the Holy Ghost. The man who preached the thus said the Lord God. The man who baptized Jesus. The man who was sent from God. He is in prison. And sometimes as Christians we feel that because of our relationship with God, we are immune from explicit trouble. Is anybody in the church with me today? But I stop by to tell you that even though you walk with God and you talk with God, trouble will still find its way into your living room. Is anybody in the church with me today? Disaster will still creep through the back door. Is anybody with me? You are not immune from trouble because of your relationship with God. There was a man sent from God whose name was John filled with the Holy Ghost from conception filled his mother with the Holy Ghost leaped in the presence of Jesus preached that thus said the Lord God baptized Jesus is anybody in the church with me but still at a young age ended up in prison and as John is in prison ladies and gentlemen he never got a visit from Jesus how do you handle it 
Am I talking to you? How do you handle it? When you've done all that you can for God. And you're in the midst of hard wrenching trouble. And it seems to either be uncaring or hard of hearing. Am I talking to anybody in the church? How do you handle it? When you've lived according to the precepts of the Lord God. And when you're in the midst of trouble, it appears as if God is not on speaking terms with you. Is anybody in the church with me today? He seems far and he seems distant. How do you handle it? Well, let me tell you, there was a man sent from God. John was not a stranger to God. He was a man sent from God himself. But when he found himself in trouble, it appears that God abandoned him. Is anybody in the church with me today? And John, ladies and gentlemen, had to send to Jesus, are you still the one? Or should we be looking for another? And even then, Jesus still never visited John. Jesus sent back a message. To his disciples. Tell John again. And you will not find the word again in your Bible. But in the Greek it is. Tell John again. That the dumb has spoken. The blind can see. The dead are raised to life. Is anybody in the church with me? Tell him that the lame is walking again. Tell him that the poor is being fed. Tell John all that you have seen. Tell him again. Is anybody in the church with me? Jesus never answered John. He seemed to tell them, show him the evidence. Tell him that the same gospel that he preached, the same thing is happening today. Tell him that the same thing he said about me are the same things that you're seeing happening. Yes, I am still the one. Sometimes we feel, ladies and gentlemen, that our trials, can I talk to the church? We feel that our trials impedes the godness of God. But trial doesn't hinder truth. Is anybody in the church with me? And please understand in this life that evil is neither ultimate nor final. Because while you're going through your crucible, God is still on his throne. While you're going through your crucible, he is still being God. Is anybody in the church? Your problem does not prevent him from being God. Tell him that the dumb speaks. Tell him that the blind can see. Tell him that the deaf can hear. Tell him that the lame can walk. Tell him that the same thing that he preached about before I came. Tell him that those things are happening. I hear somebody asking Jesus, are you the one? Or should we be looking for another? I've done everything that you've asked me to do, but there is still trouble. I've done everything that you've asked me to do, but I still have disaster. I've done everything you've asked me to do, but my children are still losing their minds. Is anybody in the church with me today? I've done everything that you've asked me to do, but my home is still not right. I've done everything that you've asked me to do, but my health is still in trouble. Are you the one or should we be looking for another? I've prayed and I've cried and I've read, but I can't hear a word from you. Are you still the one? Should we be looking for another? There was a man sent from God whose name was John. For as much as he was sent from God, God did not spare him trouble. I wish I had a church in the house. I said for as much as you are sent from God, God did not spare him trouble. No special treatment for him because of where he came from. The years of a man are still full of trouble. Am I talking to somebody today? 
The devil is still alive. Sin is still in this world. Can I talk to somebody today? But God is still on this throne. And I know sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, it seems that God is far away and we can't hear him or we can't feel him. But I hear the songwriter said that when you can see his hand, still trust his heart. Is anybody in the church with me today? I hear the songwriter says that when you go through the fire, he will be there. And when you grow through the water, he will will be there. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but God is still there and hear me today. God will not bring you to it if he can't get you through it. Sometimes we prefer to go around it. Sometimes we prefer to go above it. Sometimes we prefer to go under it. But God has mapped out a route for you. And the route is not around it. The route is not above it or beneath it. The route is that you got to get through it. Is anybody in the church with me today? Because this is the path that God has mapped for you. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Can I talk to somebody? I said this was a man sent from God. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Baptize his cousin Jesus. Did everything that he could, but God still allowed his enemy to arrest him and throw him in prison. Because John was a forerunner. I don't think the church is with me. I said John was a forerunner. John's responsibility was to make way for Jesus Christ. And when Christ came on the scene, the ministry of John must end. Oh, the church, the church is not here. Am I talking to anybody in the church? I said he came into this world for a purpose. And when his purpose has been satisfied, then he must go off the scene. The Bible said there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The man is in prison. Not once was he visited by Jesus. One day, ladies and gentlemen, the woman whom he preached against, even though John is in prison, she still harbor bitterness and hatred for the truth that John preached. Hear me? John was no longer preaching. He was in prison. But the woman was so upset about what John preached that she could not stand to live in the same world with him. Am I talking to anybody in the church? I don't like this preacher. He doesn't preach like the other preachers. Other preachers don't say the things he says. I don't like the things that he says. Is anybody in the church with me? Hear me today. When you do what God has told you to do, it can land you in trouble. And then God becomes your problem. Am I talking to anybody in the church? The woman was mad about what the man preached last year. Am I talking to anybody in the church? There are folk who don't come back to church because they don't like what the preacher said. Huh? I ran into a fellow in Toronto. Can I talk to you? Ran into a fellow. Stopped at a gas station and I had a, there was a handbill. I went to do an evangelistic meeting and there was folk giving out handbills. And as I stopped at the gas station, he had one in his hand. And he looked at me and he said, you look like the guy on this picture. Is anybody here? And I looked at the picture and I said, I believe you. I look like the guy in this picture. And then he introduced himself to me and he said, I used to go to an Adventist church. But the preacher said so and so. And I've never gone back since. I don't even like Adventist people. Because of what the preacher said. I said to the fellow, how long was this? And when he told me, I said, man, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Is anybody in the church with me? This was 15 years ago. 
And the fellow still remembered something that the preacher said to the point of hatred for people he does not even know. Am I talking to anybody in the church today? There are people, ladies and gentlemen, who will not be able to bear the truth of the word of God. I invited him to church. Sat and I talked with him. And on the final day of my evangelistic meeting, I had baptismal robes in my hand. And he walked from the back of the church. He took a baptismal robe. And he cried like a baby. And then he got into the pool. Am I talking to somebody today? Hear me today, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible makes it clear. That the truth by nature will cause an offense. Is anybody with me? You can't avoid telling people the thus that the Lord God. The woman hated the man. And she decided she's got to stop sharing space with him. So she called her daughter. And she said, here's what I want you to do for me. Tomorrow is your birthday. Uh huh. Your father, you know who he is, you know who fathers are with their daughters. Praise God. Anything you want, he gives it to you. So, so I, I, I'm going to run down to Nordstrom, get you a, a nice dress, and I wanted to dance for your daddy. And when you're done dancing and he's pleased with the performance, then he's going to ask you whatever you want, I'll give it to you. I want you to tell him you want the head of John the Baptist. Am I talking to you? She said, Nordstrom, praise God. I, I want the head of John the Baptist. Praise God, there's somebody who knows what that is. And the young lady Got a dress from Nordstrom. Praise God. Dressed up. And the party is in full swing. Can I talk to the church? Some Ed Shireen and Justin Bieber running on the track. Having, some, having a good time. And she started to dance. And when she danced, and her father was pleased. Father said, anything you want, ask me and I'll give it to you. Girl said, I want the head of John the Baptist. Am I talking to anybody? And as he made his promise, he had no option but to go down into the dungeon and have somebody remove the head of John the Baptist, separating it from his body, bringing it onto the dance floor. Am I talking to anybody in the church? There was a man sent from God. Whose name is John. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Anointed. Appointed. Preach the thus said the Lord God. Does everything that God asked him to do. Baptized Jesus. But yet his head ended up on the dance floor. What do you do? If God... Never seem to come through for you. What do you do if the prayers that you've prayed doesn't seem to be answered? What do you do, ladies and gentlemen, when you've lived the pure and godly life and yet, ladies and gentlemen, you ended up as dead in the most disingenuous fashion? Would he still be your God? Would he still be your God? Can I talk to the church? If you have prayed and nothing happens, will he still be your God? If you live a healthy life and yet the doctors tell you that cancer is rocking your body, will he still be your God? You've been diligent and hardworking and yet you lose your job. Will he still be your God? You raise your children the best way you can and yet they come back to be a mess. Will you still be your God? You've done everything that you should and your home is still a wreck. Will he still be your God? You lose your home. Will he still be your God?
your God. Am I talking to anybody in the church today? There was a man sent from God. Whose name was John. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And yet ladies and gentlemen. When his head came down to die. Kiss the dying pillow. John ended up in disgrace. Will he still be your God? How do we handle a matter like this? Come here, Moses. Come and testify. Can I talk to the church? Come here, Moses. Come and testify. Well, Moses, tell me about your encounter with God. Well, you see, I told God that I wanted to see him. And when I told God that I wanted to see him, God said to me, I can't allow you to see me because no man can see my face and live. Can I talk to you? But I'm going to carve out a place in the rock. I'm going to hide you inside of the rock. And then I'll cover you with my hand. I'm going to pass by you. You're going to see the back part of me because there is a place by me. I hear God saying to somebody today, there's a place by me. In the midst of your trouble, there's a place by me. In the midst of your despair, there's a place by me. Can I talk to the church? In the midst of your difficulty, there's a place by me when your friend turn against you. There's a place by me when they gave you the pink slip. There's a place by me. And I heard the songwriter said, there is a place of quiet rest. Near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. I'm about to set this mic down. Are you ready for it? Here it is. Jesus never visited John. Am I talking to you? John went through his crucible all by himself. Jesus never visited. But years later, as Jesus recalled the life of John the Baptist, Jesus gave a benediction. Jesus gave a eulogy that John could have used while he was living. Jesus declared, of all men born of women, Fear has been none greater than John the Baptist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter what you go through or how it ends, all that matters in the end is a benediction from Jesus Christ. Am I talking to anybody in the church? I said, all that matters in the end is a benediction from Jesus declaring that of all people that have walked on this earth, there was none like her. There was none like him because she remained faithful even in the midst of trouble. John, his head ended up on a party floor. But Jesus declared, there was no man greater than John the Baptist. The question is, are you the one or should we look for another? The answer came back from Jesus today. I am still the one. I am still your way maker. I'm still your promise keeper. I'm still your light in the darkness. I am still the one. Stand with me. Stand with me. As we get ready to pray today, I wonder if there's somebody. Just want to shoot your hand in the air quickly. And say, Pastor, Sometimes I feel like John the Baptist. Sometimes I feel that God is either uncaring or out of hearing. 
sometimes I feel that despite my faithfulness, the things are just not working out the way it should. And I'm tempted often to, to walk away from him. But today I hear that despite my difficulty, that God takes note of my faithfulness. And I want him to declare like John the Baptist, like he did from John the Baptist, that at the end of it all, he was faithful. And she was faithful. I wonder if there's someone who's going to shoot you around in the ear and said, like John, I've often have to ask the question, are you still the one God? Or should I be looking for another? Is there one person? You just want to raise your hand and said, like John, I've had to ask the question sometimes. Like John, I've, I've felt abandoned sometimes. Like John, I felt like God has not been there sometimes. Like John, I feel like I'm going through my crucible all by myself sometimes. Like John, I feel the earthquake of problems shaking beneath me sometimes. Is there one person? You just want to raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me because I've had the John experience. God bless you in the back. God bless you. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Who just want to raise your hand and say, pray for me today. Because sometimes, God bless you, my sister. Because sometimes I feel like John. So the question is, what do you do? Well, child, you just stand. 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 Father, we thank you that despite the storm clouds of trouble that often hide your face. We thank you that beyond and behind those dark clouds you're still being God. You're still working things out for our good. We confess to you today that sometimes our faith is threatened. Sometimes our peace becomes challenged because we can't seem to hear you, we can't seem to see you, we can't seem to find you. But we thank you that you're still being God. Sometimes we're too tired to hold you. So God, today we ask you to hold us. Sometimes we're too weak to cling to you. So we ask you to cling to us and never let us go. Sometimes, great God, we're, we're just, we just don't possess the energy to keep on going. So when we can, we ask you to carry us along the way. And oh God, we just want to hear your benediction that the end of life's trouble when you shall put in your appearance, we just want to hear you say, well done. Well done. So today we put our trouble into your hand, our cares into your hands, our challenges into your hands. And we say, God, take our lives and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. And Father, when it's all said and done, we pray that with our sins forgiven, you will save us in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray.